Do you want to stop losing all your hard work in those annoying Illustrator crashes? If you do, then stay tuned, because I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to avoid an Illustrator crash. And make sure you watch to the end so you can catch them all. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, stop working in random file sizes, especially very large file sizes. Designers sometimes make their sketches in random sizes and wind up with excessively large sketches. Then they make their artboard bigger to fit these large sketches. Bigger sketches equals bigger file sizes equals more likelihood of Illustrator crashing, especially if you start using lots of patterns and brushes on these huge sketches. Look at this file. The sketches are very large and the artboard is a whopping 50 inches wide. There's no reason for an artboard to be this big. The best way for designers to set up their project files is to make the artboard in the same size as the paper you would print it on. So in my case, I would print on either letter size paper, 8.5 by 11 inches, or tabloid size, 11 by 17 inches. Keep your artboard in either one of these sizes and make your sketches fit the artboard. Make sure your sketches are in a size proportionate to this size artboard, and work in this size consistently to start out with. You can always make your sketches bigger or smaller later on, depending on how many styles you need to fit on the artboard for that given project. Setting up your file this way will help your file to stay a normal size and will help you to prevent Illustrator from crashing. Tip number two, avoid having excessively large pattern swatches in your file. Pattern swatches can make your files very large. On a presentation file, you may be using several prints or patterns and you may have them in various colorways as well. The more patterns and variations of patterns you have in your file, the bigger the file, the bigger chance that Illustrator will crash at some point. If you know that you're going to have a lot of different patterns in your file, then when you bring each pattern into the file, reduce the scale of the pattern before dropping it into the swatches panel. Don't put an actual size pattern into your swatches. You're going to shrink it on your sketches anyway, so just go ahead and shrink it to begin with before putting it in the swatches panel. This will help your overall file size to stay relatively normal and will help you to avoid an Illustrator crash. Tip number three, get rid of unused pattern swatches and brushes in your panels. Like I just mentioned before, pattern swatches can make your files very large, and so can brushes. It's understandable that when you're working out your project, you may have a lot of patterns and brushes on your file, and a lot of colorways too as you're working out all the colors and details of your presentation. But all of these things add to the size of your overall file size and give you a bigger chance of an Illustrator crash. So once you've worked out certain details, like once you've decided on final colorways for a print you're using, it's a good idea to get rid of the unused print swatches and colorways in your swatches panel to keep your file at a good size and to help you to avoid an Illustrator crash. An excessive amount of brushes can also crash your file. So once you know which ones you really need to keep for this project and which ones you don't need, get rid of the brushes that you don't need in your file. You can take the elements you don't want and save them onto a different file to use later or onto a swatch library or brush library and save them for another time if you don't want to lose them. That's what I usually do. Tip number four, reduce the size of flat images brought into Illustrator. Sometimes we need to bring flat images into our Illustrator files like photo references that we want to show, or sometimes textures and patterns from Photoshop. But these images can sometimes be very large and can contribute to Illustrator crashing. So there are two things you can do to prevent this. One, before you bring an image into Illustrator, shrink it down to approximately the size that you want it to be in Illustrator before you bring it in. Two, after you bring it into Illustrator, rasterize the image. To do this, select the image, click on Object, Rasterize, and it will give you three options for resolution. You can choose to make the image 72 ppi, 150 ppi, or 300 ppi. The smaller you make it, the better your file will perform but you have to decide based on the quality of the initial image. If the image is already a bit pixelated, you might want to go with a higher resolution. But if it's a pretty good quality image to begin with, go ahead and bring it to the lower resolution of 72 ppi. Right after you rasterize the image, you'll be able to see how much your image quality was affected by rasterizing, if at all. And if you don't like it, you can always hit Ctrl Z to go back and pick the next best setting instead. You can usually rasterize a reference photo to the lower resolution like 72 ppi, but with textures that you're going to use as a swatch or as part of your artwork, you may want to rasterize with a higher quality setting. And now tip number five. But real quick, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful Illustrator tips like this. Tip number five. Avoid excessive clipping masks. Clipping masks have a purpose and can be useful in some instances, but some designers use them way too much. 
Illustrator will go crazy if you do that. Keep use of clipping masks to a minimum. I usually just use them on callouts and sometimes to clip decorative elements. When you start using too many clipping masks, Illustrator may be more likely to crash. So keep them to a minimum and you should be okay. Tip number six, avoid using too many artboards in one file. I know that it's great that with the multiple artboard feature, we can lay out lots of pages within the same file and see our whole presentation on one page rather than clicking from file to file. But doing that also comes with an increase in our file size and more likelihood of Illustrator crashing. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of the multiple artboards feature. It's definitely useful in some cases to be able to lay your artboards out like this, and you can do it, but my personal preference is to use the multiple artboards feature only when I want to check on the cohesiveness of my collection. But I also keep each artboard saved on its own separate file as well, which is what I'll use in the final presentation. This way, if Illustrator starts going crazy on me, I know I won't lose what I have saved on my separate individual files. Tip number seven, avoid using drop shadows. Drop shadows can add a nice finishing touch to your work. But unfortunately, drop shadows will often cause Illustrator to freeze or crash completely. It doesn't seem to be a problem at all in Photoshop, but in Illustrator, it totally is. You can see that drop shadows are making Illustrator do a lot of work whenever you try to transform an object with a drop shadow. It often seems to freeze and go a little bonkers each time you do this. So I try to avoid using drop shadows in Illustrator except for when I have to make a lot of garments in a white color. Like if I'm doing an entire collection of white garments. Then I would try to use drop shadows because you kind of need to make white garments pop. But other than that, I avoid them and opt for using thicker outlines on my sketches instead if I need to make them stand out. And for those occasions when you absolutely need to use drop shadows, make sure you're putting all of these other tips into practice to give yourself the best chance of not having an Illustrator crash. Tip number eight. Change your GPU setting. If you go to Edit, Preferences, Performance, you're going to see a setting here that says GPU Preview. What you need to do is uncheck that box to deselect GPU Preview. You'll find that this may help Illustrator to stop crashing. Now while this setting change does work, you may or may not want to use it. It depends on how important it is for you to be on GPU Preview. GPU Preview is supposed to give your Illustrator a performance boost and help it to run faster and smoother. It's also what enables you to use the animated zoom feature and real-time drawing and editing feature as well. Without GPU Preview checked, you can't use these features. So if you're really attached to animated zoom or the real-time drawing feature, or if you're someone who really notices a difference in their Illustrator performance when you're on GPU Preview and you prefer it, then you may want to try the other tips before resorting to turning off your GPU Preview. Tip number nine. Also in the Edit Preferences menu, go to File Handling and Clipboard, and under Data Recovery, change the automatic save settings. You can either uncheck this box completely to disable automatic save, or instead, try selecting a longer interval of time in which Illustrator automatically saves. For example, if you have it set to save every two minutes, you can select a longer interval of time like 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Changing to these settings can help to prevent Illustrator from crashing. Although this may work, for me, I like to err on the side of caution and keep at least some interval of time for automatic saving. But it's totally up to you, which leads me to my last and final tip. Tip number 10. Save, save, save. Save your files often. This one doesn't prevent your Illustrator from crashing, but it's the best safeguard you have when Illustrator crashes do happen, so I had to include it. The automatic save setting we just talked about might contribute to Illustrator crashing, but saving manually does not. At least not if you follow the other tips in this video, all of which keep your file size down to a minimum and truly prevent Illustrator from going insane. Not saving often enough is one of the biggest mistakes that designers make when working on Illustrator. If you want to know the most common Illustrator mistakes that you should avoid, then make sure to watch my Illustrator Illustrator Mistakes videos, parts 1 and 2, all the way through. Click on